Welcome back to Morning Live as we get into our book feature this morning. Lorenzo Fioramonti is a professor of political economy at the University of Pretoria. He also has over 60 scientific articles and nine books under his belt. His latest offering is titled Wellbeing Economy, Success in a World Without Growth, a read that seeks to change the economic game and offer us a practical alternative in the development of the country's economy that's dominated by four and competition rather than solidarity and collaboration. Well, Professor Fioramonti joins us now in studio to help us learn more about this informative book. Welcome to Morning Lab. Good morning. Thank you. I think the timing of this book is so apt. We're two downgrades in and a technical recession, but you predicted where we'd be right now four years ago. Tell us about that. Exactly. I mean, for the past four years, I've been saying that our economy was on the wrong trajectory, not only because our growth was coming down, but also because our fundamentals were wrong. And um, a lot of economists, experts, so-called advisors said the opposite, and they were wrong. They were wrong because because they do not understand what kind of development we do need for the future. It's not the development of the past. It's not large industrialization and fewer and fewer jobs. It's about decentralization of resources and more and more good jobs. And this is exactly what is in that book. Economic growth, a mantra I think we're all obsessed with. We say it all the time, politicians say it all the time, media practitioners say it all the time. But what does it really mean? And how do we as South Africa grow ourselves out of the current economic position we're in. Look, a lot of people believe economic growth means a better life, and nobody's against a better life. But that's not necessarily true. You can have economic growth at times of destruction. Um, destroying the environment grows the economy. Getting involved in a war grows the economy. Having sick people grows the economy. In South Africa, the largest industrial sector is private security. They thrive out of crime. So they're creating jobs, but actually they are a response to malaise. So we have to be really careful when we talk about economic growth with blanket statement. Nobody's against a better quality of life, but that, that doesn't always come with higher economic growth. That comes when growth is of good quality, and South Africa hasn't had that for many years. And this was on the wrong, you know, we knew that the country was on the wrong trajectory, but we insisted on throwing money at the system. We insisted on building large infrastructure rather than supporting small businesses. We insisted on supporting ESCOM, which is so dysfunctional, rather than decentralizing energy systems. We could have done it. We can still do it, but we need a political, a serious political will and also a change of mindsets. Hmm. Now, what is interesting and what I did love about your book was that you know, the first few pages is usually reserved for the thanks. An author would like to thank their mom or their wife or their spouse or whatever. You instead chose to outline some of the hurdles that undermine the well-being economy. Could you take our, readers, our listeners and our, our viewers through some of those hurdles? Look, when you are talking about alternatives and new ways of looking at development, you make a lot of enemies. Nobody likes my work. Very few people like my work in positions of power because my work threatens their own status. So I start the book by saying, you know, I'd like to unacknowledge a lot of people, a lot of groups in our society, in our country, from the mineral energy complex, from the big um, energy corporations to uh, some of the private banks and some of the big institutions that have continued continuously um, encourage people to spend and spend, get indebted and build a system of conspicuous consumption which has led us towards the disaster in which we already are. And I think you know, it's important that we also understand that this whole idea that development comes with increasing consumption is self-defeating. We've seen it around the world, we've seen it in Africa with the Africa Rising discourse which was so short-lived but for some time everybody was cheering Africa was coming out of poverty. That was untrue. Africa was growing inequalities and conspicuous consumption, and that is a problem. Mm. You say here, look around you. What do you see? You see a world of debt. Now, I want to know from you, what are some of the behaviors as consumers that we can change about ourselves and how we view ourselves within this economy um, that could potentially help us, you know, five, four years down the line, be in a better position than what we find ourselves. Absolutely. As I said, in this book, I talk about moving away from being a consumer to becoming an active change maker. The economy is our realm. We shouldn't be just passive listeners, passive viewers, passive consumers. South Africa has got more than 10 million people were blacklisted for debt. 
Some of this debt is necessary, of course. People have, are struggling to make ends meet, and that is a serious problem. But many people are simply throwing money away, throw, you know, out of the window. I have a personal experience. I live a very simple life, but still very comfortable. I earn much less than some of my colleagues, and yet, in, at the end of the day, my income is higher because I optimize expenses. I have a household in which I produce my own energy and I, in which I rain, um, harvest rainwater. And a lot of my uh, neighbors don't do that. And then they, out, they end up with a higher income, but actually most of the money goes down the drain and at the end of the month they're struggling to make ends meet. These are all things that we have to reconsider. We don't need a growth economy. We need an economy which optimizes resources. And all that right. is going to make everybody better off. All right, that is where I'll have to stop it. What an interesting book. You absolutely have to get it. Well-being economy. We all have the responsibility to be active in this economy and no longer passive consumers. Time for us to take a quick break. We'll be back with more when we return right here on Morning Live.